I called her the town council meeting on April 12th, uh, April 1st, 2012. And the first item on the agenda is the opening prayer by Pastor Elizabeth Carr. I just want to say what an honor and a privilege it is to be able to come and to have a town council that uh, just allows us to pray with you and, and to bless you guys. And uh, so I just really appreciate your hearts on that. So let's bow our heads in prayer tonight. Father, I thank you, Lord, uh, for these uh, amazing people of God, Lord, that uh, have given of their time and uh, that have vision for our town. Lord, I ask that you would give them wisdom and counsel. Father, and I ask that you would give them continued vision. I pray for unity, Lord, and I pray, Lord, that your blessing would be on them, and I just uh, pray for unity in this room. Uh, Father, I pray, Lord, that they would be able to move the town ahead to where you want it to be, Lord, and uh, I just thank you for each and every one of them for the time that they invest. And I just pray your blessing on them and the people that speak tonight, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Next time, you have an extra prayer for the mayor. As a number of text hearing, amendments are to the end of the agenda. Council of Wars, Council of the Rocky. I worship. Under new business, I guess 8.2, Alberta Cup Hockey, Alberta. 8.2. Eight yeah. Thank you. I'm Brandon. I have not to worship. Okay. I have not. Uh, under new business, 8.3, city status. Council Rebel. Another for me, your worship. Administration. Mr. Worship, under 8.4, Water Treatment Plant Decommission. Water Treatment Plant Decommission. Anything else? No, Your Worship. Move the acceptance of the agenda. All in favor? Carried. Okay. Uh, 4 1 adoption of the March 21st, 2012 administration meeting minutes. Big fun. And the council adopt the March 21st, 2012 administration meeting minutes as presented. Another motion all in favor? Carried. 4 2. Move the adoption of the March 21st, 2012 regular council meeting minutes. The other motion all in favor? Carried. Uh, under 5 1, financial payment, delegation. We have uh, with us a uh, young gentleman, Darren Addison from uh, Young, Parkin, and uh, McNabb, who's going to give us a report on our great job that everybody's doing. Thank you, uh, Walter. I work with the University Council. Um, you all have a copy of the financial statement. And given that you have already gone over the statement in, in some detail at the meeting, um, I was supposed to get the highlights today, um, to take the most significant items, and of course I would uh, address those questions that may come out. But. So, um, if you want to just go into page one, which is the independent auditor's report, the auditor's report does mention that it is management responsibility for the financial statement. And our responsibility as auditors is to do our audit and to provide an opinion as to whether or not the statements are fairly presented. And in our opinion, the financial statements are fairly presented. So they do fairly represent the operations of the town for the grand of the 31st. Um, page three of the quality statement of financial position. We start at the top uh, with financial assets. And we assume that they uh, deduct the liability and come to a, a net financial debt of 225000 And from that, we have the non-financial assets, largely the tangible capital assets, which consists of mostly the infrastructure and buildings and roads and whatnot. And that's $169 million. So in total, uh, the town has about $169 million of accumulated surplus at the end of December 31st, 2011. So that seems like an awful big number, 169 million accumulated surplus. But when we look at note nine, and it breaks down what the accumulated surplus is made up of, um, 
and if you compare it to the previous year, what, of 164 million, the difference is we had a roughly, a, we'll see on the next page, about a $5 million excess of revenue or expenses uh, for the year. So it brings it up to about 169 million. As I mentioned, Note 9 breaks down uh, what the community surplus is, is uh, made up of. And the vast majority of it, or about 154 million, is equity that's already been spent on tangible capital assets. So we still have the assets, the roads and the infrastructure and the, the pipes and the ground and there, all that stuff. The other roughly fifteen million dollars um, is consists of six point one million of unrestricted debt assets and about eight point eight million of previous surpluses that have been set aside in specific reserves. So that fifteen million is really what you have available for future spending. The other one hundred fifty four million of surplus has already been spent, so it's not it's not available for future spending. So those were the that's kind of the, the big highlight I think on the statement of financial position. The next page is the statement of operations, or the, the income statement, if you will, for the year. Um, in total, there was total revenues of around 20 million, just over 20 million per year, which is up a little bit from last year. A couple of things that are up, uh, net municipal taxes were up, um, just about bang on budget, up about 4% from the prior year. Uh, user fees and sales of goods are up a little bit from last year as well, about 8.5 million. And government transfers from operating activities are coming at about one, a little over 1.2 million, and that's quite a bit over budget of 624,000. Uh, and the main reason for that is the affordable housing grant that came through um, gets recorded as it wasn't budgeted, but it came in as grant revenue and it got spent, and it shows as an expenditure under administration expenses. So if you look down under expenses, the second line. Administration expenses this year is about 2.6 million compared to a budget of about just under 2 million. And the main reason for that, of course, is the, uh, the affordable housing grant that came in, got spent, so it's an in and out or, or a flow through, um, and it shows uh, as the expense there. So that was the one um, big budget difference there. In okay, could they stop here? Does everybody have copies of that? Some people don't have copies. Are there all copies available? Okay, everybody? Does anybody want copies? Anybody else? Okay, sorry about that. No problem. Um, so uh, again, that was the big, the big items in the, in the revenue lines. On the expenses, you can see the various um, expense categories there, and compared to the prior year and the budget. And the one big budget difference is in the area of amortization. So we capitalize and amortize all the, the capital assets. Um, and the budget for those came in at about um, total budget was about 4.2 million in actual amortization expenses, only about 3 million. So it came in about 1.2 million under budget. That was the, the one big, if you look at total expenses, 21.2 million roughly compared to about 20.5. The big difference there is in the amortization category. So uh, we have a subtotal then deficiency of revenue over expenses for other. So a net loss for the year from operating activities is about 430000 On a $20 million or so budget, I consider that to be basically a break even for the year. And then from that total, we, we add in the government transfers for capital and any contributed assets. So if the developer does a subdivision, and the assets get turned over to the town that's considered a contributed asset, we record the casual capital asset, and we report the offset as, as a contributed asset revenue. Um, those assets get recorded as revenue in the year that you get them, but we're going to expense those tangible capital assets over their expect, expect useful life. So we have a uh, we don't have a proper matching, or we don't match the revenue to the expense. So we show this five million, five point four million as revenue this year, and the expense is going to come over the useful life of those assets. So we show a surplus for a year of about five million when you consider the capital assets. Uh, probably from operating activities, the, the surplus for the year was actually about four hundred thirty-one thousand dollars deficiency. Um, the next page shows the statement of changes in the net financial debt. So it shows you how we went from net net asset position last year to a net debt position this year, and basically it's because we um, we had annual capital asset positions that were funded by by reserves. Um, the next page is statement of cash flows. 
So it shows basically tax position was unchanged or changed very slightly from the prior year. But it did uh, does show that he did generate about seven million of cash from operating activities and basically spent that on capital. As Council Pilgrim, as we're going here to ask questions as we go, we'll get the president back up. Is that, is that enough level of detail for the further? I'm comfortable with it. <laughs> okay. Um, so basically, again, cash position is relatively unchanged at the end. And then we get into the notes, and I won't read the notes to you, but uh, there's, there's so what is the significant accounting policies, and those will be virtually identical to last year. Then we have several other notes that gives the detail of specific. Um, balances that we have already seen, so we can see the breakdown of the trade account receivable, for example, in note four. Um, if you want to know what that would mean, that book. Note seven um, shows the breakdown of the deferred revenues, so these are specific grants that the town has received for specific things that, that haven't been spent yet, so when they get spent next year, that will get recorded as revenue at that point. So the bigger one there is the municipal sustainability initiative grant. Um, note 8 is the long-term debt note, so you can see the principal and interest payments that are scheduled over the next five years. Note 9, as I mentioned, shows the breakdown of the accumulated surplus. So I think that Note 9 is, is probably the most important note that shows uh, the breakdown of that accumulated surplus, as I already mentioned. Note 10 shows the details of what has been set aside in specific reserves by council and by previous councils. Um, the next few notes again show some more breakdown of uh, revenues and uh, equity capital capital. Note 14 shows the expenses by object. So we've already seen these same expenses on the state of operations, totaling $20,505,000. Now we're breaking them out by objects. So you can see your categories, for example, by salaries, wages, and benefits, which are up about 4%, which is cost of living increase of about 2.3%, and a few additional positions. And you can see the, see the remaining uh, categories as well. Note 16, I'll just point out that um, the debt limit that the Municipal Government Act sets out for each municipality is, is calculated based on your total revenues. And your debt limit is calculated at just over $30 million for this year. And your actual debt that you currently have is about just over 15 million. So there's about 15 million of capacity remaining, or roughly about 50 percent of your capacity has been has been used. So that number is going to fluctuate as you take on new debt and as you pay off old debt, and as your revenues fluctuate. But at the year end, it was roughly uh, 15 million. Oh, uh, your worship, if I could go through, through the chair. So that would, that 50% uh, of our debt limit, that would be a lot different than recent uh, postings in various newspapers that set it much higher than that. So we're at 50% as of year end. Okay, that's, that's great news. Okay, um, the next notes give you some more uh, required disclosures on trust funds, uh, salary and benefits disclosure uh, is required. Um, the remaining notes I think are pretty self evident. Uh, but we have a lot to add to them. I would point out Schedule 1, um, which is the the last page, shows the schedule of changes in accumulated surplus. So again, we can see the total surplus at the beginning of the year, about 164 million. The excess of revenue or expenses for the year, including the capital, of about 5 million. So a uh, balance at the end of the year, about 169. But if you want to see the details of how that is, changes from year to year, you can see the, the various uh, items that, that do affect those categories. The other two schedules give a, again, additional information on balances we've already seen. So Schedule 2 is Schedule of Tangible Capital Assets. You can see the, the, the details of what the town has invested in capital assets in categories of land, land improvement, buildings, and of course engineering structures and the big ones. So that's where the majority of the costs lie. And you can see how much of that has been expensed or amortized, and how much is still remaining to be expensed over, over its useful life. So you expense those assets 
over anywhere from 10 years to upwards of 75 years depending on your asset. You had commented earlier on that you had uh, spent about 90 in the last four years. Was it about 90 million? About 90 million additions over the last four years, yeah. So you can see that your um, total net book value is about 169 million out of a total cost of about 202 million for the second column to the right. That's a pretty high ratio of a good indicator of service life remaining or life remaining <coughs> both your assets. So the big one we know is the water line from a couple years ago. Um, so that's you know, that a lot of capital asset additions in the last few years. And still being able to maintain your balance sheet position for the most part. So your your net debt position has decreased slightly, but on a ninety million dollar or so amount of additions over four years, uh, you know, pretty strong balance sheet still on mm -hmm. position. So. Um, schedule three is the last schedule, and that shows additional details so scan of revenues and expenses. We've already seen the total column. It matches up with the amount we've seen on the scale of operations. So now we can see additional detail by the various segments of general government, uh, protective services, etc. You can see how much revenue and how much expense um, is the house for the details segment. Any questions coming from the council? I'd like to note that uh, not only we, as the, uh, our committee gone through this to be the fourth time, but we've also had um, council has gone through this uh, training with and ball workshops and like this budget on an ongoing basis, so we, we have studied it. And also questions to, to uh, mail all throughout the year many, many times to poor guys. But you're going crazy, but it's done a good job. Uh, thank you very much. Are there no questions? Your Worship, I would move to accept the 2011 financial statements as presented and that the mayor and the CAO be able to sign for the town's draft. I'll hear the motion. Not, there's no further discussion. All in favor? Thank you. I, and Your Worship, I would move to. Uh, um, I'm going to take a five minute recess. Yes, yeah, a five minute recess. I just signed the document because you've got to be on your way with it. I appreciate that. Thank you. All in favor? Carried. I'm going to do this in the back. I don't want to be drunk. Got it, everybody here. Oh. <laughs> this is a good report. Yeah. <laughs> And a a meeting? Yeah. Does it matter where? Whoops. The FIR uh, later which financial information returns that has the exact same numbers just to make comments. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, Darren. You're welcome. Thank you. Motion to go back into uh, all in favor? Great. I just want to thank thank you, Mel. Our uh, our uh, yeah, brother. I want to thank our administration and uh, specifically uh Mel, and the great job that you've done. We have a lot of a tremendous amount of trust in you, and I think that you have done a tremendous job. And we really appreciate that.
Council get first reading to bylaw 12-06, the uh, utilities rate and penalty bylaw. Yeah, I'll read the first motion, the first reading motion on uh, there. Okay. Second and third reading. Somebody? You wish to move, I would give, uh, move the council give second reading to bylaw 12-06, the utility rates and penalties bylaw. Yeah, I'll read the motion. All in favor? Discussion. Any good no discussion? <laughs> <laughs> I assumed there was none. Sorry. All very carry. Right? Everybody's hands up? Uh, okay, there's no discussion. <laughs> <laughs> there might Yeah. Was was there any discussion? <laughs> no, I, I didn't think there was none. <laughs> They're trying to figure it but anyway, okay. Carried. Third reading. The first that was the council gave third reading to my father. Unanimous unanimous for example. Unanimous. <laughs> To bylaw number 12-06, utilities, rates, and penalties bylaw. You all heard the motion. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. No third reading. Hey, third reading. No, no third reading. Yeah, go ahead. Early on. What's that? I don't know what to say. Third and final reading. I move that we get third and final reading to uh, bylaw number 6.1, I mean 12 dash 06, uh, the utility rates and penalty bylaw. All in favor? Carried. <coughs> we'll talk about it later. Yeah. <laughs> Six two water utility service bylaw number 12 07. Uh, the bylaw has also been updated to. Provide the current legislative and environmental standards and it mirrors the rates and penalties. This one has the most meat to it uh, and the most changes, um, mostly administrative and procedural in nature. So I request that you give first reading to the bylaw. Do you wish if I remove the council give first reading to bylaw 12 7 water utility services bylaw? With an amendment to remove any reference to the CAO from sections 7A and to delete sections 7B, 7C, and 7B. Y'all heard the motion. All in favor? Carried. Looking for a second reading. Your Worship, I would move the council give a second reading to bylaw number 12. Dash 07 Water Utilities Bylaw as amended. Any discussion? Not. All in favor? Carried. Looking for a third reading. Third. I move, I move that we give unanimous consent for a third reading to bylaw number 12 07 for the Water Utility Services Bylaw. Y'all heard motion. All in favor? Carried. 
Now third degree. That's right. And I, I never do agree with that, but anyway. <laughs> let's, well, let's go over the, the, that road. Now we need a third reading. Your Worship, I move that council get third reading to bylaw number 12 to have 07 water utilities bylaw. The other motion. All in favor? Carried. Thank you very much, folks. Thank you. Now, supplementary assessment by law number 12 that's zero three. The worship group by law is to allow the assessors to perform supplementary assessments on new construction completed in the town during. 2012. The uh, Municipal Government Act for supplementary assessments in 2011, pardon me, the supplementary assessments completed in 2011 uh, raised $29,660 for the town. We request that Council give for second and third reading to the supplementary assessment. These, these are for, for uh, residences that have become occupied in 2012? Correct. I move that council give first reading to supplementary assessment bylaw 12 03. The honored motion on there. Carried. Turn for second. Your Worship, I would move that we give second uh, reading to the supplementary assessment bylaw number 12. Dash zero three. Any discussion? Order motion. Councilor Robert. Uh, yeah, through the chair to uh, uh, Director of Corporate Services. This comes up annually. That's correct. It's housekeeping by law. Yes, it's not something that we can it's set right. yeah. once and, and uh, it continues. The MGA requires that it be passed. Thank you. I think so. Yeah, anyway. It's under the MGA, we got to do it. Yes. Thank you. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Carried. Your Worship, I would move to give unanimous consent uh, for third and final reading uh, to supplementary uh, assessment bylaw number 12 3. Y'all heard the motion. All in favor? Carried. Rocky, it's your turn. <laughs> third and final reading. I, your Worship, I move that council give third and final reading to supplementary assessment bylaw number 12 03. You all heard the motion. All in favor? Carried. Thank you very much, Council. Thank you. 1 Old Business RCB Traffic Initiative. Yes, Your Worship, I ask that this matter be brought forward from uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, just uh, basically, I found that uh, concerns about traffic are consistently um, uh, amongst the top issues that are raised by constituents when they're asked about what troubles them most in our town. Larger municipalities and most cities have actual traffic sections that are solely responsible for dealing with traffic within their borders. Strathmore does not have a municipal traffic section and that responsibility is placed on the shoulders of the 16. RCMP municipally funded peace officers when and if they find the time and opportunity to focus on that area. Some would say this responsibility should follow the bylaw enforcement officers and uh, to that I disagree. Traffic stops are amongst the most dangerous situations that peace officers find themselves in and it's clear the many injuries and deaths of armed policemen have resulted from traffic stops. As unarmed peace officers, our bylaw personnel should focus on their main mandate, education and enforcement per per pertaining to Strathmore bylaws. On March 20th, Strathmore Detachment Staff Sergeant Marzinza came to the council with an idea that would see some of his personnel put in extra shifts on overtime to focus extensively on traffic issues in Strathmore. I applaud the Staff Sergeant for taking an innovative approach to what is often a frustrating issue. The program is not without concerns. Overtime shifts are expensive and it's understandable that the taxpayers of this municipality or this council are not keen on paying more for policing. What I like about the proposal, however, is that it's designed so that the lawbreakers pay for the program. While focusing, focusing on offenses that deal ex exclusively with the safety of our citizens, such as speeding, stunting, racing, stop sign violations, and distracted driving infractions, 
Another nearby jurisdiction which is using this initiative, is that initiative has discovered that there has been no additional tax dollars spent. Simply put, the lawbreakers will pay for this program. I've been assured by Staff Sergeant Marzinczyk that the program will be mo properly monitored and there's an understanding that there will always be a focus on safety issues during these shifts rather than just writing tickets for the sake of statistics. In his words, this project is designed to provide an additional service to address community traffic concerns with the focus on public safety. I ask for council support and agreeing to a six-month pilot project for this traffic initiative and I move that council approve the Strathmore Detachment Enhanced Traffic Enforcement Program designed to last for six months from the date of implementation that the cost of the said program is not to exceed $24,000 and that an appropriate MOU be created between the RCMP and the Town of Strathmore with the Mayor being authorized to sign on behalf of the Town of Strathmore. You all heard a motion, um, Councilor Best? Your Worship, these 14 officers that we have are paid to, to do a job and, and part of that job is traffic uh, enforcement. Um, to step forward and, and pay them double time uh, for giving out traffic tickets. And I know that uh, Councillor Sobel has mentioned that he feels it would be, uh, would pay for itself, but I'm, I'm not convinced that it will be totally revenue neutral. Um, and the other fact of the matter is here is, is if anything goes to court, we also have to bring these officers into, uh, to go into court to cover, to cover extra time there. Uh, and, and that also adds on to the pay of this. Um, for that reason, and, and for, the, uh, for the reason that this should be covered with, with normal duties, as per that is part of their job, uh, I certainly cannot vote for this. Any further discussion? Councillor? Uh, Your Worship, if, uh, if Councillor Sobel is correct and Chestermere is working so that it is revenue neutral, um, I know that uh, I've had a lot of comments and messages as far as safety and, and uh, traffic violations within town. And if it, if it is a situation where the, the 14 members are having a difficult time um, looking after the traffic violations throughout the town, then I, uh, I think it'd be a good idea to try it for a six month basis. And if it doesn't fund itself, then we've learned a lesson and we've given it a chance to try and make the town safer. I know I get a lot of complaints, a lot of comments about uh, traffic and violations and speeding in town. So I think for a six month trial, it's, uh, it's a good thing to give it a shot. Any further comments? Well, uh, I'd just like to uh, reiterate what I, what I uh, said before and uh, uh, we have, and, and correct me here, uh, Dwight, help me out on, on this. Have we got 14 or 16 members? There's 16. Okay. So we have 16 members that we pay for. And um, for, for this to, to, to come in as a revenue neutral um, service to the town is uh, something that I, uh, I have a very hard time accepting. And, uh, 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 it's like Officer Best indicated, uh, we have, uh, uh, when, when these people finish their shift, uh, as was indicated last time, when they should finish their shift, they're gone and, and there's no more follow-up work to be done after that. I, I, I uh, find it hard to, uh, to accept. Uh, what happens if, they, uh, if they, somebody gets pulled over from pure driving? Or uh, are they just going to turn turn around and say, oh, sorry, I, I'm only doing uh, traffic. Uh, we're not going to bother with this because that will require me coming back. Uh, and I might have to take off, take days off from work. Or if I am on days off, then they'll have to pay me to come in uh, to, to court. Uh, I, 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 I see all kinds of problems coming up that way. Uh, I don't know if we have enough members in the community. Uh, to uh, to take on this role, uh, there's a possibility that uh, there would be members coming in from different detachments that, that are looking for overtime, and uh, uh, I feel we have enough members here that uh, that can con control and, and 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 patrol the community uh, with with the uh, population that we have. It was indicated earlier that. Uh, 
uh, kind of okie tokes to have about twice the population that we have, and they only have three more members than we do. And and they are they aren't going with this program. So I'm I'm just questioning as to why we want to pay these people uh, overtime in order to patrol the town when we are already paying them their regular wages. And, and if we have, if, if this, if we do this, we were setting precedent because then any other service providers that we have in this community will say the same thing. Oh, you want this done? Okay, well, pay us, pay us overtime and then we'll come in and do it. That's, you know, that we were setting precedent. You had your two minutes. Thank you, Councilor Hamilton. Oh, just uh, a few comments. I noticed in uh, South Sergeant Martin's report the other day that he stated the enforcement that is up, which is good. Uh, I checked with the peace officers here in town, and uh, they have no stats or complaints documented from the from them. And I understand that there's a monthly program to the local RCMP detachment in regarding seatbelts, feeders, etc. So I think they're doing a sufficient job as is. Thank you, Councilor uh, Rocky. Your Worship. Uh... I'm a little confused here. Exactly the uh, bylaw officers we have in town here, are, they can or they can't deal with speeders? They can. Not, not at this point, again, but we, we, could, point. we could get them. So my point is, uh, I would sooner see uh, money going that way and get get these bylaws upgraded so they can deal with it, or hire one or two more that can deal with this stuff. Thank you. Um, my comment. I, I, I know I respect the citizens of Strathmore, you know, uh, are concerned. Um, we do have a program set in place as uh, I'm mean, I, all respect to, to do the respect to Council Fuel. I mean, what can you advise some of these citizens if they have got a complaint to, to, to put it in writing to, to, uh, to the town office? And uh, time, sometimes that slows down the, uh, the I know they, um, I just want to talk about sort of, sort of attitude. I mean, I, I, and I mean that with the greatest respect. Mm -hmm. No, I understand. Yeah. So uh, that would be my suggestion, and uh, I'm, I'm along with the rest of the council here that uh, are the ones that spoke so far. That uh, I, at this point, I'm, it's not even a budget either, but I mean, it, it's not that we can put it in there, but um, I, I would be in favor of this time. Your Worship, could I just ask one question? Yeah. I, I'm not a Mountie or never went through the training, but in a typical shift that a Mountie goes through, how much time would be spent on paperwork for the cases that they're working on? Uh, I'm at, I guess I'm asking two former members. Yeah, you know. on the case. You know. So there's no set hours that are set aside for paperwork? No, but there's new programs in place that are paperwork heavy. I mean, there's, there's more administration and paperwork now than probably ever. It's, it's and we inform, we're informed today that, times that we're, in. we're informed today that it's going to increase the paperwork. But that's an issue later on. Um, there's no further comments. Council Silva, do you have your final comments? No, I, I, you know, I just, I don't want to muddy this, and, and uh, I don't want to, I don't want it to being suggested that there was ever any suggestion by Staff Sergeant Marzinsic that any outside members were were coming in. It was his proposal, so I'm assuming that he feels he's got enough staff that that can that can put in an extra half a dozen shifts per month, and this is what we're talking about, probably six or eight, uh, five or six hour shifts per month. And these members would uh, focus completely on traffic. And the the, uh, the nice thing about this program is to give our the members uh, carte blanche to deal solely with traffic areas for an extended period of time, where they they're able to actually accomplish something. Whereas they don't have that time now; they're always being called to complaints and, and going away from the traffic duty. So uh, I still think it's a great program. I think it's a it's a fiscally responsible program. I really don't see any any downfall to this. But uh, once again, it says uh, council wishes. You all heard the final discussion, uh, our comments, uh, I'll call the question, and uh, all in favor? Two in favor, opposed, uh, the motion defeated. We will move on to 8 1, United Way MOU. Linda Nelson, thank you. Your Worship, uh, this, the item before council is the uh, new memorandum of understanding between the town of Strathmore and the United Way. 
and the administration is recommending a couple of amendments to the MOU prior to passing it. Uh, there are three items that we believe should be under the United Way Strathmore Partnership Committee. Um, so we're recommending that these be, we strike these from the agreement, and that is clause number 2.01. 2.03, 2.06, and we are also recommending that we change clause 2.12 to read the following. To consider conducting a local Strathmore needs assessment in conjunction with municipal planning every five years in order to determine priority areas that funding decisions made by the Area Partnership Committee will be based on. And we are asking that Council approve the Memorandum of Understanding and Contribution Agreement from the United Way of Calgary area as amended and authorize the Mayor and CAO to sign the agreement. Second amendment. Any um, questions? If not, I'll move the motion. Your Worship, I would move that Council approve the Memorandum of Understanding and, con and Contribution Agreement from the United Way of Calgary and area as amended and authorize the mayor and CAO to sign the agreement. Do you need the amendment stated again, or not? Uh, I have them written down in the motion. Yeah. And just wondering, should it should be in the motion? I have them recorded in Okay, okay, so you haven't heard it. If there's no further comments or questions, all in favor? Carried. Thank you. Thank you. 8-2, uh, that's Rockies, Alberta. Uh, yes, Your Worship, I've been asked uh, on behalf of Wayne Hansen, President of the Strathmore Minor Hockey Association, uh, regarding Alberta Cup Hockey Alberta. He asked me to make a short presentation here tonight uh, to Council and Administration. Uh, this is a hockey tournament for Bantam aged players. Is there an emergency? There's a deadline to it. You were telling me. Oh, there's a. Uh, deadline, yeah, that's why I have to bring it up tonight. Uh, April 13th is the last day they have to have this bid in. Okay, this is a hockey tournament for Bantam age players 13 to 14. This tournament moves around every two years to different locations in Alberta. Wayne, uh, in conjunction with Strathmore Minor Hockey Association, are putting together a bid to host this tournament in Strathmore. Uh, April 2013, April 2014, they're basically looking for town support other than financial. Uh, he asked me to uh, read off a few things here, so I won't read the whole thing, but uh, Hockey Alberta is now in the process of accepting bids for this Alberta Cup. The Alberta Cup will be comprised of eight teams. Uh, each team plays five games. There are 20 tournament games in total. This tournament is a three-year event in the province that helps identify top bantam age male players in Alberta. It is well attended by scouts as they prepare for the Western Hockey League's bantam draft. Uh, in addition to player evaluations, it's also an opportunity for administrators, coaches, trainers, and referees to be evaluated. Uh, the event has an economic impact to the host community of approximately $500,000 as proven through an independent study done at the 2010 Alberta Cup. Uh, it provides a great opportunity to generate revenue for local organizations while enhancing the profile of the host community. Uh, the hosting standards they're looking for uh, facilities to be able to host this event uh, for April 2013 and April 2014. The host community must have a sufficient population base. Uh, the, again, the host committee, which is the Strathmore Minor Hockey Association, will be assuming full financial responsibility. Uh, there's a few other small items in here. I don't think I have to read all that. To host an event of this type, certain facility standards must be met. Uh, preferably the host venue will be a twin rink facility, which we seem to have here in town. 
Uh, the host arena must be able to hold a minimum of 1,000 people, and the secondary rink must be able to hold 500 spectators. Uh, Wayne did mention there might have to be temporary seating in there. Uh, he also wants to book the uh, Civic Center for the same time frame to have an open house type of forum for the, the kids and the coaches and the teams so they can get together and, and you know, just uh, waste a little bit of time between the games. Uh, nine dressing rooms are required for Alberta Cup. Uh, facilities must be provided for food and refreshments throughout every day. Uh, storage space for Hockey Alberta must be provided at the facility. Alberta, our arena facility must be delivered clean. Hockey Alberta reserves the right to cover conflicting sponsorship advertisement within the facility. Uh, provide Hockey Alberta with access to pipes and drapes and tables and tables for dressing room and lobbies at no cost. At cool trailers might be needed for additional change rooms. Basically what Wayne is looking for uh, the conversation I had with him on the weekend uh, is the arena and the Civic Center at no charge. Uh, the town to help coordinate uh, events with advertising, uh, promoting the event, uh, maybe sponsor an open house at the Civic Center uh, with uh, food and snacks and drinks. Uh, have promotional handout bags tied in with local businesses. Uh, the main thing he wants and he needs this before next week is a letter of support signed by the mayor and CAO. Uh, these bids have to be in by April 13th. And he can't proceed with this bid unless he has this uh, letter of support from the town. Just tell Bryson quickly, can team be in with it? Teams with eight teams with uh, 20 kids per team. 160 and kids plus parents plus coaches plus. And volunteers, was he getting enough volunteers? I believe they're going to look after that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, go ahead, Councilor. I'd like a question to the Chair of the Administration. Is it normal practice for us to uh, waive fees in tournaments like this? We haven't done, but Council could consider. Further questions? Or, yes, Councilor. Your Worship, for, for a tournament uh, like this, where it, it will certainly bring our town some recognition as, as well as uh, allow these uh, boys to play hockey in a good facility. Um, I think this is a no-brainer, and I, I, uh, I certainly support uh, Councillor Blockland in this. Councillor Gill? Uh, question for Councillor Blockland. Um, is, the, is the minor hockey group here in town confident that we won't have to make a lot of uh, improvements financially to the, to the hockey rinks? I mean, uh, we're talking about uh, temporary seating in the one arena. Uh, what about, I know you said aqua trailers. Are they, are they saying that it's going to all be financially done by their group? Uh, that's what uh, Councillor uh, Fuel, that's what he talked to me about. Uh, they haven't figured out the uh, lacrosse schedule on that other rink, so they might have to stage games around just on the one night surface. But the stipulations where they, where they mentioned the ATCO traders, they have to have uh, nine dressing rooms. And the one item I didn't mention that I. We got 10 going. Somebody in Crichton, I don't know. Pretty sure there was 10. And, uh, yeah, five on the side. The one I, I know, didn't mention, maybe that answers your question. So Councilor, the officials are in the other two officials. Councilor Fuel, we need, a, we need a broadcast area with a high speed, hardline internet connection uh, throughout the, uh, as well as a wireless internet facility throughout the arena. I don't know what that involves, your Worship, I checked on that today. The great side is not a problem. We should have that anyway. Pardon me, we did. Council Dole? Well, I, I guess I, I, before I, you know, I have no problem with the letter of, recommend, of, of support. I, I, I think this is a great concept, but I, before I go into uh, to committing ourselves, I, I'd like to know what our cost is going to be for this. And, and it seems to be your. Uh, There's a letter of support letters. on here you're getting. A letter of support uh, uh, entails a cost support. Can you do the cost support later? That's what I'm asking. Councillor. Well, I think part of the cost here, maybe you guys, maybe the councillors are looking at, is uh, the uh, arena would have to keep the ice in for approximately three weeks longer. And uh, staff, I guess, I, I'm thinking staff is 
Is there any way whether they're lacing it or not? Your Worship, they already have some of the staff on during that time. Councilor Bessler. Your Worship, I'm, I'm confused. This, right. this, this council has um, brought forward that we, we want to uh, to bring our town out, out to, to the, the rest of the province and to the country. Um, we're hiring a person who will, will be bringing tournaments and things to town, and I just don't understand why we're sitting here arguing about this. I don't think we're arguing. This, this, this is going to order. Just some discussion. I think that's only fair. Councilor, Councilor Rempel. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, question to, to the Chair, to Councilor Rocky. Uh, uh, did I uh, hear you uh, uh, correctly? And in, 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 uh, in, in what, what part of your presentation did you say that uh, Strath and Minor Hockey were uh, assuming all the responsibility for all costs? All financial responsibilities. All financial responsibilities, okay. I realize that the short, uh, he only got hold of me here on the weekend, and I realize there's a short time span here because he has to have this bid in to uh, Hockey Alberta by April 13th. Uh, I could have him here for administration next week, but both of us are at a UFA Bison's Wind at Banquet. Although I suppose we could make room if you would. If you want to have him here, I could make arrangements to have him here. In, in, in going through that proposal, what, uh, in, 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 in your estimation, would be the town's contribution? Is just the faci facilities or? Uh, I think they're looking for facilities. Yeah, I, I don't. Uh, facilities regarding the arena and the Civic Center, they definitely want the Civic Center booked for the same time frame, which is about five days. This is a five-day tournament. They're not looking for any, any uh, uh, financial contribution from, from the... Not, uh, not the way Wayne was talking to me. But. Okay, thank you. Well, I'm in favor with, with uh, Councilor Bretz and Councilor. I don't know who else was in favor of it, but uh, I, I like it. And it brings people to town and it's going to recognize our town a little better. I well, keep, keep in mind here, uh, as soon as he uh, gets our support, puts this bid in, he has to wait to see if, he, if indeed he is successful on that. Yeah, 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 of course. And I don't even know if, uh, if there's enough rooms in this town to support all these people. Oh, there's been yeah. bigger terms than that. Oh, okay. yeah, not bigger. Because of some of these people. Uh, I didn't think we have enough dress rooms. I've been there for 20 years. I opened it up. I can't remember. <laughs> some of these people start staying in the city, and then, of course, the dollars start going towards the city. Anyway, we do we, we do have enough. Okay. We've got bigger, way bigger than um, There's when you think about it, there's four dressing rooms on each side yes. and then one for mm -hmm. in each side for the yes. right. yes. yeah. yeah. And the Biden. Yeah. Um so that there's enough. But uh, I'm looking for a kind of a clear basic motion then. Uh, Your Worship, I'd like to make a motion that uh, council support this proposal and uh, we offer full uh, Support to uh, uh, to I guess uh, Alberta Cup on behalf of the Strathmore Minor Hockey Association if they are successful. Could we have a recorded vote, please? We can. Thank you. Order well, motion of your Your Worship, I wonder if I could offer a, a, a can we uh, as a friendly amendment can we offer a letter of support for this project uh, to them I, I, uh, in regards to approving. Uh, costs that is going to come to us, we don't know what those costs are, so I'm, I'm a little skeptical of, of approving uh, unknown uh, costs. Was that your intention of the motion, Councilor Rocky? Just that the, the, uh, but his, his intention was to support them completely, and I don't know what that means. I don't know what the dollar figure in supporting them completely is. So I, I'm prepared to support them completely in a letter of, 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 of support by Council for this project. Your Worship, uh, in response to Councilor Sobel's uh, friendly amendment, I I don't know if it's necessary. I mean, uh, I, he's told me uh, Strapper Minor Hockey is taking the full hit on the financial obligations. He wants the town of Strathmore to support this thing and with regards to using the arena, uh, using the Civic Center, maybe at no charge, whatever it costs that, if that's the cost of the shoulders talking about. Well, I'd be willing to even give that up, but this is the I, I, He has not mentioned any other cost to me. 
Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Well, it, 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 we were also talking about supplying food for for. Oh no, that was a suggestion. I mean. Okay, so it's, we're basically just looking at the arena and the and the, and the civic center for the five right. days. Yeah. Hold it up. Y'all heard what I heard the discussion or not? Oh, uh, Your Worship, could I? I know this is maybe not. Right, but could I? Could I just hear the motion again, or have it read back so I know exactly what we're going for? Um, <laughs> that council support minor hockey's efforts in hosting the Alberta Cup in April two thousand thirteen and provide a letter of support to the Stratford Minor Hockey Association for this. Your Worship, that's a two-year commitment, right? Two thousand thirteen and two thousand fourteen. Are you happy? Really? <laughs> Understand? Really happy. Good. I wasn't being sarcastic. <laughs> was this a, uh, you want to have it here for two years? No. Yeah. It goes in for two years. Let's see. Okay. It's, it's in Lethbridge right now at the end of this one. I'm going to call the question. All in favor? Um, carried unanimously. Thank you. So, uh, Your Worship, before we get away from this, uh, you will have somebody will have something ready for you. Uh, no, uh, before next week. Oh, yeah, well, administration will have it, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You're, you're going to deliver it, or who's the voter? I can deliver it, yeah. We need a name to address this to. Uh, Wayne Hansel. But isn't there the, the group that you have to address it to? You better ask him. Okay, I'll ask him. Thank you. Uh, 8 3. Uh, City status councilor. Fuel. Fuel. Casey forgot. I did. I did. Uh, Your Worship, uh, the idea of going to a city status has been something that re reared its uh, reared reared its head uh, fairly recently. It's been an ongoing discussion. Uh, I know it was bandied about for a while too, um, shortly after the election. I think with the population on our size that we have and the fact that it really wasn't much of an issue in the first place, it kind of developed. I've also received uh, some different comments that are really in favor of, of our town staying um, town status and not pursuing this. So I'm bringing forward a motion and I would like to move that the town council and administrative staff discontinue any efforts that would involve moving towards city status at this time and that the May 10th open house be cancelled. Y'all heard the motion. Any questions? Go ahead, Councillor Best. Your Worship, uh, not only has there been comments uh, against, but there has also been many comments for um, going to city status. Uh, I, I personally have had many people talk to me about that. Uh, I also think that I trust the people in this town enough that uh, taking this to them on, on the 10th of May would be uh, uh, beneficial for them and, and, and then we can get a real view of exactly what our town people think. I think right now that um, we have uh, land that needs uh, to try and uh, entice industrial uh, people here so that we can get an industrial tax base which our town direly needs. Um, therefore I believe that we need to put this in the hands of the people so that they can come and talk to us on the 10th of May that they may give us uh, proper and, and uh, direct guidance. Uh, therefore, I, I will not be voting for this. Any other comments? Questions? If not, I'll be more final uh, attorney to speak uh, on, the, on the motion. I uh, was one big uh, advocate of the city status and, and uh, not saying I'm not now, but uh, I, I brought, actually brought it forward and uh, asked the councillor to, to bring the motion forward. But uh, I think the citizens themselves should uh, should uh, take, a, take a, a long, hard look at it and give, and, and give us the pros and cons of it. They, they got the opportunity, they got the time, a lot of them, and uh, bring forward to us uh, the, the uh, pros and cons themselves, and uh, that would take a lot of time, less administration time, and so on and so forth. I, I, I think it's a good thing, but I, I think there's other issues that we have to, uh, to work on first, and uh, I'd be in favor just to let it sit for a while and, and then go from there. So if there's no further comments, uh, all in favor of the motion. Opposed? One opposed. Motion carried. Uh, uh, number 10, one council trade reports. No, uh, 
Oh, I'm sorry, eight, oh, sorry, uh, eight four. Sorry, I did have it written down. Who was that? Was the medication? Yeah. On, on, on each of you have a sheet in front of you, but anyway, on March the seventh at the council meeting, Epcor came to council uh, with a schedule of how they wanted to uh, move the alum drying beds, get it cleaned up, uh, up at the old water uh, treatment plant. It's I forget, a couple hundred feet or so uh, southeast of the building up there where we treated the water. So anyway, that night when EPCOR presented their proposal and their schedule, council felt at that time that it should be uh, tendered out. So anyway, EPCOR went back and they tendered it out and it was, the tenders went out on Monday and uh, I started getting calls uh, yesterday about it and uh, there was concern because in our package on the internet on our website uh, we showed the one that they had recommended uh, get the contract and all of the material that the dad and so on is, was on in the agenda on our website so other people uh, that are tendering on it could see that material and uh, they were very concerned that they felt confidential information ended up on the website. So anyway, with that, it's uh, made it pretty difficult in the last day and a half trying to figure out what we should do on it. And uh, about 5.30 tonight, uh, we put this together. And uh, the recommendation here was the council approved a 2012 capital project for the water treatment plant, alum bed disposal, in the amount of $319,042, with funds to be drawn from the financial stabilization reserve and trucking to be provided by Greece uh, Limited. I guess uh, the only concern on this, since the council meeting, um, I was notified that several, there's a meeting tomorrow, and maybe Jessica could explain that part. A site meeting. That's correct. As part of the tender process, there's a site meeting scheduled for tomorrow uh, associated with the tendering process and the project. Okay, any further comments? <clears throat> you, no, you, you were in consultation, I see, with our, uh, under the re uh, request for decision, uh, there's a good in con consultation with our lawyer, which was always very concerned, right? Yes. Any questions by Council Council uh, Has any of these uh, people coming tomorrow been notified to, uh, to cancel? No. Not a one. What time is this meeting tomorrow? 1.30. There's, there's opportunity to cancel phone make phone calls in the morning? Yes. Okay. Councilor uh, Fuel? Uh, Your Worship, a question to the Chair, to the Administration. Does the, the decision-making process that EPCOR went through as far as uh, picking their excavating company, does that fall under their umbrella, under their scope of, uh, of uh, control? Like, my point is, we wanted it to go to the tendering process, but is that something that falls under EPCOR's decision-making process? To worship, uh, traditionally, every time the schedule came to council, um, council accepted on the schedule. On, on a project that we wanted done. So that's about, let's just stop more. Council Rental, did you have something? No, I don't. Does someone want to care to make a motion? Your worship, I'll make that motion that council approve the 2012 capital project for the water treatment plant Alum Beds Disposal in the amount of $319,042 with funds to be drawn from the Financial Stabilization Reserve and trucking to be provided by Grace Limited. Can I make a friend of that this uh, request for a decision uh, document be, be attached to it? Question. I would like to make a friendly amendment to that motion. Uh, just, just in, uh, it says uh, the uh, alum bed disposal in the amount, and I believe it was up to the amount of 390. Up to, yeah. And, and do you mind if we add this? Mm -hmm. Can we add this attachment, Councillor? Yes. 
So uh, can you accept that for any minute? I do. Thank you. And uh, y'all heard the motion. So no further discussion, please. Uh, any questions? If not, all in favor? Carried unanimously. Thank you. Uh, Council and committee uh, report. Uh, we'll start with uh, Councillor Sobel. Oh, <laughs> rising there. Uh, you worship uh, in Council um, in regards to Strathmore Weekend Eviction Team. A meeting was held March 1st. At this meeting, it was announced that Prairie Merchant was once again graciously sponsoring the Strathmore Weekend Eviction Team in the amount of $2,500. The drug awareness nights were also discussed. It is noticed, note, noted that there are two nights left for parents to attend the Strathmore Youth Centre for these uh, educational uh, courses. They last about an hour, hour and a half. Uh, one's on April 30th, which is helping kids to make good decisions, and the other one is uh, May 28th, how to talk to your kids. Regarding the uh, Strathmore Golf Course Arts and Recreation Foundation, a meeting was held March 27th, and it was announced that a majority of shareholders at the golf course had voted in favour of having a business plan prepared with a budget of $50,000. Efforts are being made to deem this group a legal, charitable organization. The group also expressed their need to urgently develop an Arts Council, a responsibility which presently sits with the Hope Bridges Community Arts Center Feasibility Study Group. Wow, that's an awful. Uh, in regards to that group, there was no meeting scheduled for March. In regards to uh, a Highway Bypass a Committee, which uh, Mayor uh, Graycheck and myself are on, we both attended Milk River, Alberta, on March 26th. After reviewing uh, Milk River's recently completed bypass, we met with Mayor McKellis to discuss the process he went through when trans Alberta Transportation was building the bypass. <coughs> he was complimentary to Alberta Transportation in a professional and considerate manner. They dealt with this matter and emphasized the importance of having our, having our town's needs and desires clearly established. All in all, it was a considered a successful visit as there were some re recommendations raised that were not previously considered. I'll leave uh, the Strathmore Assembly for you, to you, your worship, as always, in that meeting. Sorry. <laughs> I was listening. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? My last comment was that I'll leave the Strathmore Assembly for you, in your hands, as always, in that meeting. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for leaving my hands. Um, Councilor Rocky. Uh, Your Worship, the uh, United Way meeting I uh, attended on March 16th, uh, pretty much business as, as normal there. We had Yagdev Shahi uh, attend the meeting from Zoom Consulting, uh, trying to get the needs assessment uh, study off the ground. Uh, not too much else. The MOU was presented to us, a uh, three-year commitment, 2012, 13, and 14. Uh, maximum amount of up to $43,000 a year. Hopefully that doesn't change out the amendments to it tonight. Uh, one of our new developers in town actually donated uh, $8,500 to the United Way. That was kind of nice. That was good for United Way. Uh, Handy Bus Association attended the meeting uh, along with uh, Mayor Steve. Uh, we were trying to represent town council for discussion and comments on uh, quite a few items we brought up. Uh, one uh, regarding the MOU, uh, to the cost of dispatching drivers evenings and weekends, regarding transfers of minimal clients on social items, and that was quite plainly stated. Uh, when one person in a wheelchair wants to go to the station for a family supper with a haul of driver in and pay three hours. It's, uh, the, uh, the cost of this thing is going the other way. Uh, the third point uh, brought up was the county's contribution to the Handy Bus Association. Did Wheatland County Council in fact approve $15,000 a year? Our chair lady, uh, who's also a Wheatland County Councilor, did say that was approved. Our second question to that question was uh, approximately 15% ridership of in the county. That number should be more than 15,000. It should be around 25,000. Uh, she was going to take that back to Wheatland County Council. Uh, a 
And the last point we firmly disputed and disagreed with was the $10,000 figure they used for inspections, and she quite bluntly stated that is the number. I don't know if you want to add anything to that, Steve. You're at the meeting with me. Yeah, I would just like to say that, um, just to clarify the one thing, that we were definitely clear of, uh, our, our favor of, uh, that if there was a handicapped person uh, that needed the bus on the weekend, that we, we would always continue those services. The one that we're that uh, we're concerned about it is the one that is able-bodied who can take a taxi should not be called in the handy bus. Um, that, that's what we're, we're thinking. I mean, because the costs are just too exorbitant. <coughs> so that's the one big emphasis. Yeah, emphasis. And, and uh, um, the, the, the disconcerting point of this whole thing is that we put in the bigger, biggest money, and 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 the, and the and the county seems to be controlling the the the, the whole the whole program here, right? And we do put 175,000 plus into it, and that doesn't include our administration time and, and, and so on and so forth. So um, we got to we, we got to sit down as council and and and, uh, and go over this MOU again. I think that uh, it's got to be re redone completely. <coughs> I uh, I did leave the meeting early with you, but upon reviewing the minutes later, apparently the board didn't really take anything too seriously what we talked about. Well, they're going to have to work on the MOU. Um, any further comments? Councillor Hamilton. Uh, yes, your worship, on March 14th, uh, I attended the Bull River uh, Water Conservation meeting in the uh, Strand Delta building in Calgary. Uh, numerous water uh, issues were uh, spoken about, and one that particularly stood out was uh, the fear of us having a water shortage in the, uh, in the future. Um, they are currently in construction uh, for a plant down by the Bull River where they are trying different uh, areas to, uh, to conserve water. It's going to be a uh, uh, world, uh, be something that the world's going to look at. It's quite, quite a, uh, a thing to see. Um, March 23rd, uh, the Chamber of Commerce had its, held its annual uh, general meeting at the <coughs> Travel Lodge. Uh, there was an eloquent and prominent speaker at the time or CAO, who uh, gave quite a, a good presentation on the various uh, goings on in town. Uh, several more directors were voted on to the board, and uh, that was it for the, there's about 40 people in attendance at the, uh, 40 or 50 people in attendance at the AGM, which is quite good. April 2nd, uh, there was a Citizens on Patrol meeting, plus Wademsa, I couldn't make the COP meeting, so we went to Wademsa. And there was, it was quite a short meeting and it was just the usual business. Reports were given by the uh, operations manager and the uh, acting president at the time. And uh, they, were, they were very brief. That's, that's it. Thank you. Councilor Best. Uh, Your Worship, I met uh, twice with uh, the Community Futures Wild Rose this month. One uh, was a special meeting in uh, Okotoks. Uh, the other was a regular, regular meeting. Um, we are still in uh, talks of the new direction uh, which uh, the WD wants us to take there in, in regards to offices joining together. Um, I will have a report on that when uh, something more concrete uh, uh, comes of it. Uh, the audit committee met twice um, and that uh, item was brought before council tonight. Um, unfortunately for housing I was ill that day, that was the day after uh, the council meeting here that uh, I was here, but I don't know if I really was. <laughs> and uh, the community future or the WSCSS meeting, uh, I had, was not able to attend uh, due to an urgent family meeting. Um, and thankfully for you, um, you attended the happy game for me as we were having inventory at uh, the store I worked for. Thank you, uh, Councillor Gill. Uh, yes, I, I had a meeting with the Youth Club of Strathmore recently. We've officially moved into the Youth Center. There have been uh, repairs done. The floor has been stripped and painted. Fire inspection was done. And tomorrow we have a meeting, so I'm going to be finding out how we've done as far as the fire inspection. Uh, the Youth Club of Strathmore has a Facebook and Twitter account now. The security lights are working and cameras have been installed. We were informed just this week. Wheatland Housing, we heard the auditor's report, it was accepted as presented, and currently the CAO is helping with day-to-day -day management of Sunset Haven as that manager is on a leave. Strathmore District Agricultural Society, 
Uh, Carolyn Johnson was named new chairperson. There was a public meeting, oh sorry, uh, uh, there was a motion that uh, uh, a quarter section of land be sold that was passed and uh, then there was a public meeting as well held in March where input was sought from uh, various members of the public. Heritage Days, we were told, will be cutting one day from the weekend. And there is a definite movement to try and attract more young people to the weekend's events. As far as the Strathmore Municipal Library minutes go, uh, we had a resignation of our chair, so Jim Greer was unanimously declared chairperson for 2012. Um, the minutes of, of the last meeting were accepted, and we had a meeting recently too as far as building expansion where other groups such as Marigold, Bull Valley College were allowed to come in and attend, and that's it. Um, just to correct something, the motion, there was no motion to put forward to sell the land. There was a discussion and... Uh, oh, that was at the IV meeting? Yeah, that, no, there will be, anybody wants to attend, there will be a motion put forward to sell it uh, next Tuesday night at, uh, at a meeting. Okay. And that was just from basically discussion. Okay. Yeah. And, and Sorry. Yeah, it's okay. Could I just inject one thing, uh, Your Worship? Uh, with there being a new uh, chair at the, uh, for the library board, I was just wondering if the town uh, couldn't send a congratulations though to you. We can certainly do that. Thank you. Councillor uh, Rempel. Uh, NAND Advisory. Sorry, we're so, sorry, yeah. Councillor Rempel. Could I just add something? Sure. Our past chair from the Strathmore Library Board uh, served in that capacity for seven years, and if there's a chance we could do something to maybe send a letter to recognize that. Maybe it's already been started, I'm not sure. No, but we can certainly, but thank you for going those steps. You're, you've got the floor now. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> Maybe the advisory uh, didn't meet uh, this past month, but uh, we've had numerous meetings at the uh, WLCSS. Um, January and February have been busy months for our staff and the board members of WLCSS. We have received uh, a request for funding from 18 different organizations. Now, besides the regular board meetings, we've had two additional meetings in order to process these requests, these 18 requests. The food bank has been very busy, and the need for, donation, for donations remains constant. The uh, home support workers are running off their feet providing top-notch care for 125 plus clients every month. Meals on Wheels have been very busy delivering meals the past two months. They have delivered a whopping 448 meals in two months. That concludes my report. Thank you. Are, are those people ever recognized by, by, by us? Not yet, but they will be in the next meeting. Okay, but I mean, by a letter of support, but thank you. No, 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 so. no we have, we have the home care workers, we have, we have the meals and wheels, we have the, the, the food bank volunteers, we have the CFP volunteers, you know, and the, and the list is going on. And, and another thing, there's a, a group of people that have this thing that's called fuel for school. Anybody heard of that? Probably just the I know him. <laughs> Last year in Strathmore, and what they do is they serve breakfast to the students that come to school that haven't had breakfast. Last year, and, and, and you may not believe this, but last year in Strathmore alone, they served more than 33,000 breakfasts. Wow. Wow. Now, if there's a group that needs to be recognized, I think they're, they're one of them. Your Worship, I would just add, uh, those are all volunteers from the whole community church. Wow. They do the field program. Hmm. Wow. What, what time is it breakfast? Secret. 
No, that's a tremendous and unbelievable. Yeah, there's so many volunteers in the community that we don't recognize, don't have time to recognize, but they're certainly appreciated and and uh, and goes out on the half. Yeah, and, and so. you know, there, there there's some credit due to the Stratham High School as well because they use the uh, the uh, kitchen facilities there during on flex Fridays and stuff like that when when there's nobody there because they they they'll make it was uh, twenty thousand muffins in in, in one. And, you know, in, a, in one morning. I think Rocky can, can probably can't even do that. Maybe. No, I'm not even interested. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like work. <laughs> anyway, to reiterate, we really do thank on behalf of council all the volunteers in the community, and, and we'd like that, that published uh, in some form or another. I know. We should discuss that. Yes? The next council meeting, we're bringing forward uh, national volunteers yeah. for a proclamation, so that might be good timing for that. Perfect. Yeah. And that's uh, the next council meeting. I also plan on doing the Citizen of the Month recognition, which will be a, 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 a volunteer service group in the community. Is that an yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the 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 we got to go home. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much. And I want to just uh, say that in uh, my reports is that. Uh, I count Marin is now on Facebook, so and linked to the town of Strathmore. So anybody, please feel free to uh, to send me uh, kind of mutes or bouquets, uh, and I certainly will make my best attempt to answer them to the best of my knowledge. And if I can answer them, I'll, I'll get the answer for them. And also, they can leave messages on my phone. Um, I tend to say uh, Strathmore Assembly for Youth, and again, I want to emphasize what a great, great, great bunch of young uh, kids these are, and uh, and doing a great job. They are uh, got three thousand dollars from Brett Wilson. The county is now on board, uh, and I don't know what they've donated or if they've donated anything. But they are on, on, on the committee. What do you say? Um, the hockey sweaters, they raised eighteen hundred or nineteen hundred twenty five dollars um, Also, um, they are considering and, and, and for further discussion to pass the council to put up a, um, and they had a specific name for it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wall, it's a spray wall. Okay. Graffiti. graffiti wall, and uh, maybe two. So and and it's and they've done a lot of research on it. I want to give them credit. They did hours and hours of research on this. On other communities have put up graffiti walls. So that if they want to put one up, they're going to come to council and, and uh, see if they can get it done. So it was most of the time was spent on that, and and uh, and, and uh, we'll see where they go with it. And they also have a uh, meeting come up. I don't have dates on this whole on the. Uh, they asked council and council to join. Uh, I think that was sent to uh, to all council. Uh, That's uh, for that uh, uh, conference. You're yes, yes, yes. That is on Friday, April the twentieth at eight forty-five. So at Strathmore High School. Great, and that pertains to uh, that would help us all in any way. <coughs> I was uh, asked to attend uh, a real uh, crime watch uh, meeting uh, to speak at it. I spoke for over uh, 45 minutes. I must have got bored with me, but they were asking questions anyway. Uh, I just let them know what was happening with the community and, and uh, from the highway to the, to the developments and uh, so on and so forth. And uh, just to help out our real friends, uh, they're important too. And uh, of course, uh, and they were very happy about us the attending. I stand at the seniors' happy gang, and again, I spoke for too long. And uh, maybe they were getting bored with me, but it was, uh, they had a lot of questions about what was happening in town and some misnomers and what was really going on. And, uh, and it was very, very interesting, both meetings. CRP, uh, CRP doesn't change much. We discussed an hour and a half, half of uh, what the rules want to do, as to what, why they don't want to join, if they want to join. They made, the motion was finally made after an hour and a half discussion that we're just going to continue without the rules. And uh, whatever happens, happens, and there's some feeling that uh, we're going to go the same way as Edmonton, and uh, the government that will make them, of course, everybody join CFP. Other than that, if there's no questions, thank you. Move of acceptance of the committee reports, Your Worship. You all heard the motion. All in favor? Carried. Are you going or not to move? Uh, mm. We have already, there's, there's no question for Gonsford, is there? Move to adjourn. Move for adjournment. All in favor? Okay.